In this tutorial, I want to show you a few basic photo manipulation tools that will help you doctor up a photo, a photo that perhaps is lacking in vibrancy or has problems with shadows, it needs to be lightened, or it's overexposed and needs to be darkened. Simple things like that that you can work with using GIMP. After we go through these basic functions, I'm going to hand it over to the experts and use some more advanced tutorials that I found on YouTube. It will help you get into the more advanced functions. But for now, if you're just looking to give a photo some small changes that will make it look better, then that's what this tutorial will look at. So we'll start by opening a file that is a JPEG file. So I have GIMP open, I say open, and then I select the file that I want to open, and now that file is open. Now notice that I'm getting this import the image from a color profile again. In this case, the, the reason I'm getting that message is that this particular folder or file, sorry, is old. It's actually so old because I'm not as old as dirt. So this was thing was not even a digital photo originally. It was scanned so I have to convert it. So I hit convert and it creates the correct, the, the correct RGB color for it. Um, and as you can see from this particular photo, I can view it in few large enough to see. Um, it's not a very good photo. It's kind of washed out. It never was and so in some sense it's a pretty hopeless photo to work with but we're going to try make this picture of me and Matt a little bit more vibrant and a little less washed out looking. So the first thing we want to do is look in the information under colors and we want to look at the histogram. Now those of you that have worked with photography before know that what a histogram is. It's not going to go into a lot of de I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but um, what basically shows the balance of color values and color balance and of lightness, darkness, contrast, things like that. Um, and it all comes together in a nice graph. So for this perfectly balanced photo, you would want to have your histogram highs to be here in the center and the lows on either edges here. Um, but you can see that we need some work to do on this photo because the actual uh, photo, there's way too much lightness over here in this edge. So that's basically what the histogram is telling us. And you can see that, of course, from the actual picture. All right, so let's start by creating a layer. So we go up here to the Layer tool, and we want to, down here, we want to create a duplicate of the layer. And so you see we currently have just one layer, so the primary file. We're going to create a duplicate of that layer and it creates it as mat1.jpg-copy. We can click on this, double click, and then change the file name. So let's change it to manipulated photo. The reason for this is that we then don't get confused which, which layer we're currently working on. All right, so this layer is highlighted. That's the layer that we're working on, the manipulated photo, which is a duplicate of the original photo. All right, so now I have a copy of my original file to work with. And the thing I want to start focusing on is the colors. The colors are kind of washed out. And I also want to look at some of the contrast and lightness. So let's deal with the lightness first. So I want to go to colors and levels. And that pulls up a chart 
that shows us the levels. Now again, I want to get rid of this lightness area. So in areas where there's nothing happening. So I can pull the level in a little bit to here. If I do that, you see that the photo gets a little bit darker. And then I also want to pull in here where nothing's happening. And you see that the, the level gets a little bit lighter. So it's a little bit better contrast here. I could also play with the arrow in the middle here. Um, a lot of this is just personal preference. Um, so you don't want it too light. You don't want it too dark. So you can play with levels and to get your contrast, your lightness levels correct. And that will... Um, you know, again, it's subjective, so it's a kind of an art to do any of this stuff. So um, I'm satisfied with what I have here, so I'll click on OK. As I said, this picture is kind of hopeless to begin with, so we're going to do the best we can with it. Obviously, the better the picture, then the more you can clean up. There's only just so much you can do with a poorly taken picture. All right, so we've adjusted the levels. Now the next thing we want to look at is under colors is curves. And the objective here is we want to create an S-shaped curve or a curve that looks a little bit like an S. So we're going to bring this level up a little higher. And then you see now that's caused the photo to, to wash out some more. So then correspondingly, we want to bring this down a little bit more. I think there's too much lightness, so I can bring that down some more. Um, maybe a little bit more darkness. Um, but as you can see, what happens is it's darkening out the background, which I'm not really super happy with. So there's really not a lot that the uh, curves can do to fix this photo. Um, so I'm not even sure that I want to change much, if anything. Um, if I decide not to do anything, I just click on the bottom corner again and it will um, snap back. Okay, so we've got that. I think it's the best I'm going to do at this point. So again, I click on OK and we have saved that layer as well. We saved those changes to the manipulated photo layer. What I'm trying to do here is I'm focusing on my face by trying to give it some more color, but at the same time, I'm trying to get some of the washed outness that's in Matt's face. The picture, obviously, the camera was too close to Matt, so it's maladjusted here or washed out. So I'm going to try to deal with that as the best I can. Um, so the next thing we want to look at is color saturations. So we go to color and we go to hue saturation. Open up that window and we can play with some color changes here. The photo has a bit too much red in it. So I want to take about out a bit of the red. And so I can do that by the hue here. I can adjust the hue. Or I could click on red and adjust just the red. And you see when I take out some of the red, my face gets a little bit more um, yellowish. So maybe I don't want to do that. Let's see if I go this way, it gets too much red. So perhaps another thing that I might consider is instead of taking out the red, how about we just take out the yellow altogether? What will that do? And I think that makes the picture look even better. So how about that we take out the green? And again, you can see that really didn't have much of an effect on the photo, but it did have an effect back here in the background. So that's probably going a little too far. And we want to maybe bring back some of that color that was in the, in the back of the photo there. All right, so again, these are things that you want to just play with. Um, the other thing that you can do is play with lightness. Um, we might have um, that. See if it goes too far. 
again going too far so you know we're kind of like at the point with this photo where it's just the best that it, it can be we could play with saturation as well um you know i think that looks a little bit better so um i think that's about all i can do with this photo at this point another thing that to point out here is that the the preview button is selected so we're actually watching or seeing what I've changed. If you want to see what it, it looks like compared to the original, unclick that and you see the subtle differences between the two photos because ultimately we've not manipulated it that much. Okay, so now I click on OK and I um, have basically the best that I'm going to be able to do with this photo um, so I'm just gonna have to say that's that perhaps somebody else with a better eye for this could refine it better but as you see even with regard to the darkness whatever at least the foreground of the picture is better than it was before in my opinion um, so my suggestion here is you experiment with some of your pictures try these different tools and see what you can do to enhance your pictures and then preview or read or watch the next advanced video which will get into some of the other tools that i didn't touch on here and some more techniques on how to refine your pictures the other thing you can do when you're all done when you're satisfied with what you have is you can save and i will save this project um, so I just save and then I um, I don't care I'll replace this and then I also want to do an export to create the, the new JPEG uh, defaults to PNG I want to create a um, a JPEG so I actually enter in the JPEG dot JPEG and hit export and as you remember in the past the second window is going to come up where we hit the second export and now we're done we've created the uh, new file uh, mat2 all right and if you want you can close this file and then you can open up the original Mat1 in GIMP. And you can compare it to the, um, the new file, so Mat2. There it is. And you can go back and forth between these windows or you could split your screen, whatever. And you can see the, I can't split the screen with Camtasia running because then you won't see what's in the other screen. So, um, but you can, you know, flip back and forth between these and you will see the differences if you want. All right, that's about it for this video.